What is up guys, Call here. Today we're having a look at some linear bearings from IGUS. And this is a special version from which you mostly seen in those kits that you can buy from Banggood, eBay, Gearbest. So what you've probably seen before is this one. It's the RJ4JP. And this is the 0110, so it fits a 10mm ten, ten rod. And you've probably seen the 8th version, maybe the 12, depending on the kit you bought. So this is in their low cost series. And if you check eBay or Banggood for these, you can get 10 pack for just a few dollars. These guys are a bit more expensive, and that's mostly because they use a different technique. So this particular model is the RZUM01 R and 10. So again, it's the it's the same same model and it's in the same series, the R series, Dryland R series. But as you can see, there is quite a difference. The top one, the R Z, uses a anodized aluminum casing for your actual bushings, with a, which are fit inside. And I said this is the R Z. You have different. You have R X R. J, so dep depending on the type of material, so I believe the X is for high temperatures and the J is for reduced bearing clearance, so if you have a particularly good rod. But I think the Z is like a regular one you can buy. And why I bought this is because in the different kits, I'm building for example a Hypercube Evolution. You have a lot of, this is not an actual part, but it's one I designed for this test. You have parts like this X carriage. And as you can see, it uses a clamping system. Some just use a push fit, and some have a casing on the back. But as you can see, these guys, I tighten them a bit, but they are pretty snug in there. But what that can result in on these guys is that they are being clamped too hard. They are designed actually to be clamped to a certain point, but after that they just bind on the rod. While these ones you have to press pretty hard to go through them aluminum casing, and by then you probably destroy this one. So it's it increases the probability that a carriage like this won't stick to the rod if you align them properly and such. So to show you I have this 10 mm millimeter carbon rod. So I bought this from a local supplier. We can check what's the yeah, it's 10 9 9 yeah, different and this isn't, isn't a particularly good caliper either. Um and if we just try the regular bearings without anything, they slide pretty good. Both do the same. This one might sound a bit more, and might have just a little bit more play. But then again, this one is made to actually be clamped. And if we just check the outside diameter, so you have a 10-ish on the inside. And of course, if I push it, I will actually extend the bushing in there. So you can see me increasing it to almost 10.2. But the difference is that this one, with its 19mm casing, if I push this in, and if I push it up here, it will actually move the caliper part. But if I push it down here, I can... It actually makes it bigger. <laughs> uh, but I, I can't make this go any smaller. Well, if we compare the 19 on this one, if I push it, see it goes down almost to 18, so almost a millimeter with that kind of compression. And that results in this one binding up if it's too hard clamped compared to this one. So let's put them on the rod and I'll show you what I mean. So you can see this one is still loose so it isn't clamped on and this one is loose as well. But if we take our little hex driver Put them in, just make them a little bit snug, and try to make it the same on this one, 
it's a little bit snug but it, and then again this one tightens up and becomes stiff while well, this one just keeps compressing so if we compress it like so see this one still moves freely while well, this one has bound up and I need to untighten it of course this is very scientific because I don't know how far I'm tightening see I loosen it a bit and I mean it's it's sticking but it still moves if I clamp them down as hard as I can this one actually th thread stops so it should stop about there this one is stuck I can move it but you know you don't want that in your printer or CNC machine but if we tighten this one up to about me actually destroying and probably lost all the clamping pressure uh, let's try put a clamp -ish on it yeah well this test was kind of ruined but what we could do is actually remove this one um, and but as you can see the this one will just keep keep going down. I mean, this one is made of Leapfrog's hybrid hybrid PLA ABS type filament, so it's pretty hard for being that thing. But it won't get too hard. So no, let's not destroy this one. Let's just go this far. I see the part bending, and I should still be able to clamp it freely. So um, that's just a sort of quick look and I'll actually remove you from the tripod and I'll show you what it is on the IGOS website. So Drylin R goes under their plain bearings. So as you can see they have different types so reduced clearing, you have self-aligning, split bearings, split plane bearings in inches of course and you also have the solid RJMP so this is a higher quality than their low cost polymer um, RJ4JP series and of course you have different types so this one is a bit smaller the, these are open so a lot of choices and as you can see you can choose different sizes so I believe it says yeah normal widths under 10 millimeters are supplied with press fit come on press fit cylindrical bearings so you have irregular 8 millimeters 10 and 12 which I use I used to 10 and 12 for my build so you can get up to 60 internal so 6 millimeter rod and 6 centimeter rods and as you can see you just need to you need to request them to be able to buy if we check pieces for one would be about seven ish euros per per bearing so quite more expensive than the others but hopefully i'll stop all the binding which i've had problems with on my other printers so thank you for checking out this sort of quick look on uh, these different types of bearings from Migus and I will see you next time.